Hello, I'm Kathy Boytis. Today we are going to color this tangled peacock. As you can see, it's very colorful, got a lot going on in here. And fortunately for you, you did not have to draw the peacock. Here the image is already drawn for you. Some of the designs in here are actually tangles. So I may refer to those as we start coloring them just so that you'll know and maybe recognize some of these tangles. So let's get in for a little bit closer, closer view here. And we'll talk about our materials and our supplies that we're using. And I hope that you're using hot press watercolor paper. This is my favorite. It's my go-to for just about just about anything anymore. So I'm going to show you is I've got a whole handful of watercolor pencils here. And most of these, I think just maybe everything with the exception of one are Derwent ink tints. Here we go, you can see the name on them. And I've got a lot of nice bright colors in here. This is the only one right here that is not an ink tint, but it's still a Derwent. So it doesn't really matter what brand you use as long as you've got some nice bright colors and you don't necessarily have to use the same colors that I'm using. So that's, here's the collection that I'll be using today. I've got my paper towel handy. Because if you've never used watercolor pencils before, you will need either a very small paintbrush or a, what I like to use is a water brush. And that's what this is. And this is a small one. And as you can see, it's got a very small pointed tip on it, which is really handy for getting in tight areas. And as you can see, this peacock has got a lot of those tight areas. So this is gonna be a great tool to use. And another reason I like using a water brush as opposed to having a little paintbrush and a little cup of water is that I don't need to keep dipping it into water. The water's already automatically loaded into this little plastic chamber here. Now, after we paint it with the watercolor pencils, we're gonna come back with a lot of, pardon me, we're gonna come back with a lot of dry, what I call dry colored pencils. And I've got a lot of Prismacolor, I've got some Faber-Castells. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what brand you've got, as long as you've got a color that's gonna work with the watercolors. And that's gonna make more sense as we go. Don't worry about these just yet. Another, uh, again, apologize for the noise. Another thing that I'm introducing in this peacock, and I love this, this is Tinge brand, T-I-N-G-E. And it's my one of my newest favorite watercolors. Let me show you right here. This is where they came out of. So you can see these, so if you want to purchase these, the Tinge brand, watercolor paints, premium metallic watercolor, and it is just luscious. It's the best gold I think I've ever used. And the one I use the most is this one right here in the middle. And you've also got kind of pearlescent and some copper tones in here. We're gonna put this on after we put our color on with our watercolor pencils because it can get a little, little bit thicker. So that's gonna make more sense later. So let's get started. What do we need now? And again, you don't have to use the exact same colors that I've used in my peacock. You might wanna use something different, it's up to you. Just, I would suggest using something really colorful though. So make it really bright. Now, the whole idea is that we're gonna put down our base color with our watercolor pencils. And then after everything's dry, and trust me, it dries very quickly, then we will go back with our dry colored pencils and do some shading. Okay, I'm going to start off with my apple green. And I've got apple green, and I'm going to put apple green up here on the peacock's head. Now you can see probably, in fact, I'm going to zoom in. I think it's going to be easier for you to see what I'm doing. I'm going to just color, just like we did when we were kids. And I don't have to get this perfect. Mainly the whole point of what I'm doing at this stage 
is to get some pigment onto the paper and that's what I'm doing. So I already know that I want my peacock's head to be this apple green, so that's enough. I don't have to worry about blending. I don't have to worry about it looking grainy. That's not a problem with watercolor pencils. Now, while I've got this color in my hand, it's smart to go ahead and find other areas where you want to add that same color. And I've got some little mooka tendrils down in here that I know that I want those to be green too. In this fun, this is going to be like coloring, almost coloring by number. It's just that you don't have the numbers. And here's another little strand that could be mooka, very similar to mooka. Now, you're going to notice that when, later when we start activating these colors with our water, that some of the lines get a little messed up or maybe a little nondescript. The uh, black line, that's what I'm talking about. Don't worry about that because we're going to go over it. When we finish coloring everything, we're going to go back over it and we're going to reestablish out all of these lines and make some of them darker, a little bit wider. So right now the lines are there mainly for you to see where to color. So there's my apple green. I think that might be all the apple green I want to use. I can always change my mind later but I'm gonna put them close by just so I can get my hands back on them if I want to. Now I've got this pretty, I've got a choice of colors I can go with. There's so many to choose from. I am going to use this green aquamarine. And this area here, that's kind of part of the neck, and this is actually a tangle called Ta, T-A-G-H. It's just that I left out part of, I deliberately left out part of Ta. See, that's the fun thing that you can go through tangles and find established tangles that look like maybe feathers or even skin or all kinds of things. So you can use those to draw all kinds of things with. So that's part of his neck. I know, whoop, I hadn't finished. I, I love this color a lot. And don't worry, it, none of this pigment is activated yet. That's what our water is gonna be here for. So enjoy this process. This peacock is rather intense. It's got a lot of stuff to it which is why I thought it would be smart for me to go ahead and give you the drawing already ready to go. Because if not, this video would be a lot longer and you would be sitting here for a lot longer amount of time. I'm looking for other areas that I wanna use this same color in. This is a tangle right here called Orally. And what's nice about this video is that you can stop at any time, fast forward if you need to, if you want to, and just color at your leisure. You don't have to color at any certain pace. You don't have to go fast. Let's see, this is a cute little tangle. This is called Frickle, F-R-I-C-L-E. I've used Frickle a lot in this peacock. And if you haven't had a lot of experience with your watercolor pencils, well, this is a great time. You would get a lot of practice with them. I'm gonna do a different color on that Frickle. And some of these in here, these shapes, kind of like a long elongated V. It's very similar to our tangle that's called flukes, F-L-U-K-E-S. And as you can see, we've got a lot of detail in here. So 
a lot of auras, a lot of opportunities and a lot of areas where we can do some coloring. And I will specify later the areas that I'm gonna leave for the metallic gold. So right now, just breathe, enjoy this process. Anytime I get quiet, it doesn't mean that I've gone away. It just means that I'm just coloring. I'm just putting down colors. I'm still using the green aquamarine. I haven't changed any color yet. I'm just adding it to, to more areas. See, this is a more efficient way. So I don't have to keep picking up the same pencil over and over. I'm not worrying about blending my colors. See, it, 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 may, it may look a little grainy. Don't worry, the water is gonna take care of all of this. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit up here. These are actually some tangles called paisley, which I knew would be perfect for this peacock. Every time I see Paisley, I think about, well, maybe a peacock. I'm going to put this pencil down. I may pick it up again later. But this so far is what I've got for this green aquamarine. Now, if you want to, um, you can go ahead and activate some of this now. So it can be drying as we go along. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I've got my water brush. I'm gonna charge it. What that means is I've got my paper towel here. I'm gonna squeeze it out till I see that it's dripping. That means it's charged and ready to go. You do not want to add a lot of water as you go. In fact, once your pen, your water brush pen is charged, you do not need to keep pumping it right here. It's already kind of wet. Now about later, if it starts to dry up a little bit, then you can squeeze a little bit out but I'm going right in here. And one thing you want to, look at that gorgeous pigment. One thing you want to avoid is puddles. If you ever get a little area that's got too much in there, just grab a corner of your paper towel and you can just blot that. So I'm not pushing out any additional water, but see how that pigment is activated and I'm using the point of this brush to sort of kind of stay within the lines. If you go out of side of lines, and I know I will in it any minute now, if you do that, don't worry. Like I said, we are going to reestablish a lot of these lines and clean it up later at the end. But look how gorgeous that color is. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. So your pencil that you used is full of this watercolor pigment. So I'm gonna stay on the same color right now so I don't have to squeeze water out and clean my brush. So I'm just going around. I have still have not squeezed out any more water. But I like that we can go ahead and do some of this as we go. So this can go ahead and get a jump start and start drying. I promise you, it will not take long to dry at all. And again, I'm not worried about establishing a gradation of the color. I'm going to work with my dry pencils to get that shading. Isn't that pretty? Now 
and you'll be surprised how quickly you can cover an image like this with this technique. My freckle hat, some of the freckle has little polka dots in it. And it, you can address those in different ways. If you want to go around those with the color right now, like I am, you can even make those polka dots a different color. Or we are going to use some white at the end to make some white dots. So look at the difference between the pigment that's been activated with the water as opposed to over here that has not been yet. Big difference. Okay, nothing different here. Still doing the very same thing. I'm just enjoying coloring at this point. I may have to turn my peacock upside down at certain points just so I can get in certain areas with my hand and get a better angle. Beautiful, smooth, smooth tones. And I can always add more of this color later if I, if I feel like I want to. So enjoy this process, just relax. Color away. Okay, I think I've got most of my blue on my black maybe. So now I'm going to do my green, but before I do that, I'm going to clean up the nib by just using my paper towel, squeezing out some water. That's it. To squeeze out some water is usually enough to clean out that nib. So now I'm going up to the head and I've got a little, if, I, if you feel like you got a little bit too much water, and I did, I'm just going to wipe off some of that on my paper towel and then go back to it. Still a little bit too much, so I'm going to blot it. My paper towel here. Now, where sometimes I'll keep a little piece of scrap paper close by and go ahead and put those first strokes on it just to let some of that excess water. Okay, don't move the paper now because I've got a little puddle. I'm gonna get that fixed. It's like suction. So calling your suction nurse here, there we go. Okay, I got all the excess water. I'm still doing green. Okay, now I've got more control. When you first charge it, that's when the water is ready to come sliding out. And sometimes it just comes, it's in a hurry. It's excited to get on your paper. And that's a nice bright color. This apple green is gorgeous. It's a it almost looks neon on the screen. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush out again by just squeezing out some water. Now let's see what do I wanna go with. I want to go with, back up to the neck. I'm using the Sienna Gold. This is a gorgeous color. And I'm going to mute myself just a second so I can sharpen my pencil. Okay, I do that for your sake so you don't have to hear that 
It's got grinding noise in my pencil sharpener. So I'm putting the sienna gold on the other part of my peacock's neck, which is going to be really, really nice. I can go ahead and tell you that this freckle coming out of the crown of his head, we're going to leave that for the metallic gold because that's such a special part. Okay, there's my sienna gold, but I'm going to add a lot more of this because it's such a, it's just a beautiful, beautiful shade. So I'm going to look for areas now. Okay, I'm going to put this same color right in here. This little orally shape that's right beside the blue one. That's going to be a good place for, for more of the sienna gold. Again, take your time. You've got the luxury of doing this on the video, so you can pause and fast forward and stop whenever you need to. It is a lot of coloring, but you'll end up with this gorgeous, frameable, boldly colored peacock. Okay, let's see where else I want to put some. I'm going to put some, I'm going to move over this way. I'm leaving areas that I know that I want to put the metallic gold, and I don't want this to conflict with that. Another good area. And I'm also going to add it to some of the auras on my scallops right up here. See, I've got most of these scallops in here have like three auras on them. So I can use three separate colors in there. It's the colorfulness of this image that makes it so attractive, I think. So it's going to be worth all of this work you're putting into it. <clears throat> I'm looking for other areas I know I want to use this. This is going to get some right here in these little aura lines. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can also use pretty much any other kind of watercolors. If you wanted to use the little press pan sets and a brush, you could do that, or even the watercolors that come in a tube, you could also use that. I find that when you use the watercolor pencils, you have so much more control over <clears throat> the areas where you put these. So that's why I like these so much. It's easier to get a sharp point on your pencil. There's another little mucha over there. Now I'm gonna activate it and go ahead and let's wet this up. And this time I'm gonna squeeze out my water. I'm going to make sure that I don't get a puddle this time. You can see how pretty this color really is. Or if you didn't use this particular color, you may have one that looks just as good. That is a strong color and it's gorgeous there. Just gorgeous. So. I haven't done anything different. I'm still using the same color in certain areas. It almost has a slight orange tint to it. So lovely. And again, don't worry if you color outside the lines. We're going to fix all of that later. Look how bright that is. It's going to be so pretty. I'm 
And then feel free to turn your image, turn your paper so that you can get a good angle to, to paint with. And I'm completely upside down. Well, I'd rather my peacock is upside down. And I've got these little parts of my scallop. This is why you want to get a water brush that's got a fine tip. You can buy these in assortments and you can pick them out individually. But for most of the work that I do, I want a really fine tip because that allows me to do a lot of detail work like I'm doing right now. Okay, look at this. We're getting a lot of color in here. Things are really starting to shape up. I'm gonna clean my brush to squirt some water out. Now it's clean. Now I'm gonna to go to my deep rose. Deep rose. This is almost kind of a fuchsia shade. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil just a second. Okay, so I'm using my deep rose and I know I wanna add some of that up in here, right next to that color that I just used, the sienna gold. Some of my little scallops only have two auras. Some have three. That's okay. Or if you want to get your pen out and add another one, your black pen, it's okay too. You can make it whatever you want to. Got a good sharp point on my pencil and that helps me too, to get into these detailed areas. Again, I'm still using my deep rose. Okay, now I'm going to move down into more of the body. I'm going to still add some to these auras, these little stripes in here. You may be looking at this thinking, wow, how nice that I didn't have to draw all that. Okay, I've got a lot of muka shapes in here. Kind of a, an exaggerated 3D mooka right in here. I'm gonna let that all be deep rose. See, now that we're doing another color, we've given all the previous colors a good chance to dry. So this is how we can work very effectively. I'm down into one of these little paisley shapes. There's a lot of detail to this particular project, much more than a lot of the projects that I teach. So, just hang in there, take a break when you need to. If you need to get up out of the chair and move around, feel free. You don't have to finish this project all in one day. And here's another little mooka area that's got some 3D tendencies to it. So I'm going to Fill that with my deep rose. Now let's see, I've got some, my fluke shapes. I wanna make sure that I address some of those auras, some of those little bands in there so they don't get left out and this frickle. I've got a pretty frickle down here. I love these. They are just perfect for whimsical projects, something such as what we're doing. Anytime your hand gets tired, 
Just stop and take a break. Get all these places, these wonderful possibilities to add more color. I'm going back up in here. I know this is such a great color, but I'm really taking advantage of adding more and more and more of it. As you can see, I've used the tangle flukes again to make these feather shapes up in here. So there's a lot of areas that I can put color. And remember, you've already got the drawing of the peacock, which you can use and print out over and over. You can make a lot of these. And you can make some with just different color combinations. You might want to do one that's just, I don't know, purple and teal. Maybe one that's pink and red. I, I'm just coming up with ideas for you. You may even want to do one that's just monochromatic, black and white, and do some shading on that. That's another idea. I haven't done that, but that would be pretty. Okay, where am I? I might want to halt with that color just for a second. I'm going to, I, again, I'm leaving my pencils close by because I, I may want to get that back again. I really like that. Now let's see what else we got in our little toolbox. I'm looking for more of a bluish shade. And I may have to refine that. So hold on while I find my blue. Okay, I've got an iris blue. And that's going to be very nice. Or if you have a jade green, that will also work. So let me find that pencil and we'll put that color in here. Okay, I found a good teal green that's going to be beautiful to put in here. I'm going to sharpen it really quick. Okay, this is going to be great. And I'm going to use this for several areas, one of which is these little spiral shapes here in the middle of the body here. That's gonna be such a great color because I love to use fuchsias and pinks and purples and teals together. And I can already tell you that's gonna be great. They're almost like little print top shapes. And I'm gonna let that go in some other places too. This is such a great color. Put plenty of pigment down for that. I'm going to add it to these scallops. And all the colors are looking great. But you may notice that they're flat at this point. That's okay because we're gonna go back later with our dry pencils and do some shading with our dry pencils. And that's when our little peacock is gonna to come to life. Be careful, it just might walk right off your page. Okay, I've got a few areas I need to add to. I'm gonna add some more of this beautiful color inside these flux. I'm purposely going to leave that aura and the flux. I'm going to leave it alone and leave it blank because I know already that that's going to be where I'm going to come back with that gorgeous metallic gold. So we, we got to leave some spaces for that because that really does make this peacock look even better. 
Okay, and I've got some areas in here where I can add that beautiful, beautiful teal green, which is kind of a jade, aquamarine, turquoisey color. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. Don't worry about putting your colors in exact places. I assure you that as long as you've got a good assortment of color in here, it's going to be great. Okay, I'm look. I'm. I've got so much color down. I'm being careful that I still leave places where I know I want to put my metallic, and this band around that paisley will be another good area for metallic. So I can go inside my little bands here of my paisley tangle. And I can put more of this, this teal color that I'm using, the teal green. And the scallops are going to be yet another color. Okay, I've got more, more coloring opportunities down in here. This freckle will be great with this jade. Again, take your time. Stop and pause the video at any point that you need to. Oh, I've got another paisley over here. I do want some gold coming down here and here. So I'm gonna put another color there, hold that. You just want a nice distribution of all your colors. So you get a lot of things that are gonna pop here. And this is gonna be a whole different color in here. I'm looking at my sample that I want to go by. But I tell you, this is such a perfect color. We're going to put gold metallic in those oval areas, but let's fill in the area behind it with this. I'm going to fill it. You might want to put a different color, but I'm going to put this, this jade green back there. That's going to be so nice. Again, yours doesn't have to look just like mine. And I don't have to worry about blending in and you know getting smooth tone with my watercolor pencils. I just need to get the pigment down and I need to put it in the places where I want it. And that's working beautifully. And this peacock is starting to get very colorful. I've got plenty more areas where I can continue add more. You better watch me. I can get carried away with this jade because I love it. And I'm about to do that. So I've got to, I want to incorporate some orange in here. So that will be my next color. And the pencil that I'm going to use is the Derwent Ink Temps Tangerine. So that's a really great looking orange. Okay, one more, one more spot, just one more. And then I promise I'll put this pencil down. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up my tangerine. Here we go, my tangerine. There's so many places I can put this, it's gonna be great. First of all, I'm gonna look at this. I know that I've got some gold coming down here. I don't wanna put the orange right beside that metallic gold. That will be a little bit of a conflict. So here's a great place right here on this flukes. And another right there. Oh, well, let's don't forget the beak up here. My goodness, I was about to forget that. Just on this part here, we're going to put the other part of the beak with a different color. 
So there's my tangerine up there. Moving on down. Let's see, I could put any place that I ha have an additional extra area that should have been. Okay, I'm gonna add ad lib right here. Okay, put some orange in here. Again, at this point, you want to be careful that you're leaving some open areas to put the metallic gold. You don't want that to be the main event, but you do want that to be a beautiful enhancement. Over here, I need some orange. That's gonna be gold. That's gonna be gold. This is a great place right here. Put some orange. And a nice orange frickle right here. Okay, that's gonna be gold. And that's gonna be maybe gold, maybe another color. We've got a great place right here for some orange. The orange really makes everything pop. It's such a, it's a strong, bold color and I love it. Okay, where are we? We've got to get some orange in here. That little scallop right in there. At this point, I'm gonna look at my pencils and see what have I not used? So, oh, we gotta get some purple in here. Now the purple, um, Derwent makes a dusty purple and it's not my favorite shade. That's why I'm not putting it in here. I'm using a regular Derwent Imperial Purple because it's a lighter shade of purple, which is gonna make it easier for me to do some shading. I didn't wanna go that dark on the purple. So I need to, oh, here's a great place. This is gonna be, right against that metallic gold. That's gonna be perfect. Perfect purple, how about that? Okay, and I'm gonna add some purple to the inside scallops over here. I know already that I'm gonna do metallic gold on the other part of that, but having some purple right on the underside, inside of that would be just lovely. And here's a great place right here. We can't forget that. It's another orally. That's the name of that tangle. A-U-R-A dash L-E-A-H. A very flourishy tangle. Got gold there, gold here. Add a little purple right in here. Where am I? At this point is the time to take an inventory and see what I'm doing. I'll probably make those little dots on my frickle, make those gold. Okay, I wanna divide this up so I can have my scallops, they will be the gold metallic. Now you're tired of hearing me talk at this point. Okay, time to add some water. One more color, the mustard. Mustard is such a, I love the shade. I'm gonna put some mustard on the other side of his beak. And that's all. I think that we have everything on our colors down. Remember, this is all gonna be metallic gold up in here. So now it's time to add color, I mean some water. I'm gonna get a scrap piece of paper out just so I don't end up with, with a puddle again. Okay, I charge my water brush. Now, well basically, you can pretty much get by, even though it's, you don't wanna mix your colors if you can get by with it, but you don't have to stop and cleanse your brush 
that often if you're in a close area like this, especially when you can tell that your water brush is getting, I don't want to say dry, but is losing some of the the main part of the water, you know, the 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 ooziness, if that is such a word. But I'm still going to stick to this jade green. I told you it was a pretty color. Isn't that great? It's working really nicely with all these other colors in here. Plus, I just tend to think of a jade green when I think of peacocks because you usually see in their feathers blues and teals, peacock colors. Okay, just make sure everything's getting wet. I missed an area. I think I can add a little. And keep in mind, um, there's different ways you can address this. If you want to, you could take a sheet, like a scrap sheet of paper. Let me get you one to show you what I'm talking about. You could take a scrap sheet of paper and use it as a palette if you'd rather. For example, where's my jade right here? If I don't want to draw directly on my design, I can just make a little palette over here by laying down my dry pencil and then pulling up that color. See, there's different ways you can do the same thing. And if that is more comfortable for you, that's just another way to kind of achieve the same thing. So I'm still working in my jade, going around finding all that jade, which may I may be here a while, because remember I put a lot of that down. And yes, I did go over the line here. I know that I'm going to neaten that up later. Oh, that jade is just beautiful. And if you're working in a lot of different areas like I am, and if you feel like your water brush is starting to get a little dry, just go back over to your paper towel, squeeze it out a little bit more. Just be careful to avoid those puddles. And things are getting really bright, which is good. And keep in mind that when we start neatening up the black lines, just that thicker black line is going to work beautifully to kind of tone down some of the some of the color. It's, you, you'll see when we get there. It's just going to work really nicely. I'm just about finished with my jade green shapes and color areas. I think I got that. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to slightly clean my brush and go to my rose shade, and that's getting to be a puddle. I got to watch that. Don't want any puddles. Okay. Suction, nurse, suction. Get some of that out. Oh, that rose, beautiful. There's not a lot of tonal range difference between a lot of my purples and my rose, so I really don't need 
to go in and wash the brush every single time. And they're still, they, they look closer on the screen than they do in person. It's going to work. So hang with me. I know it's a lot of work and I know it's tedious. I think you're gonna like your finished result though. And sometimes we need to challenge ourselves and do some bigger projects. Let's see, back up here with all my rows. Beautiful shade. I missed a spot, which is if you do that, you can just go back in with your pencil, put it right back in there. Oh, look how bright this is. This is nice. Nice and bright and colorful. This is what we want our peacock. Okay, my peacock is changing on his head now so I can get to some areas. And I hope that you're still with me and haven't left me yet. This would be a great gift. Put a frame on this. Somebody, somebody you know may be a peacock fan. Or they will be when they get this. Okay. I think I've got all my pinks and purple. No, I don't. I just when I Said that I saw some, oh, here's some more. I keep seeing more. Okay. Oh, lovely colors. Okay, where am I? We got to get this orange activated. Oh, that is gorgeous. That orange gets really nice and bold. Okay, getting too much water. And I guess you're seeing, or I hope you are, how quickly this dries, which is wonderful because it allows us to keep moving with the next step once we get all this activated with water. Okay, I missed a spot. I knew I would. I just knew I would. Easy to do. There's so many areas in here. I could have drawn a mo more simple peacock, but I wanted you to have something that was very unique and detailed and just special. The beak, don't forget that beak. Both parts of it. 
We'll probably add some eyelashes to the eye in a minute. But right now, I'm just making sure that all my colors are activated. And yes, there's some areas where they look a little messy. That's okay. We're going to neaten everything up. So this is the part where we're going to go to the metallic gold. Oh, yay. Yes, it's time. So first of all, make sure your water brush is clean. Squirt off some water. I'm going to my metallic. And I want to work from this pan here. I want to get on the screen so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm really just, I mean, you can't see that. Okay, so I'm really <clears throat> just activating it right there in the pan. And then I'm going to just kind of brush it off a little bit and then go to my areas where I, I'm going to go straight up here to the top. My, well, I'm putting it back on his head again and just go in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that on the screen, this looks almost brownish. I wish it didn't because it is brilliant gold. It is like 24 karat gold. I think in just a minute, I'm going to angle my page so you can see, look at this. Look right there, see? That's what I'm talking about. That's what it looks like. It is brilliant gold. It's the best gold metallic I've ever worked with. So just go back to your little pan, just kind of swish your brush around till you get a good thick coating on your little water brush. And if you go outside the line like I'm doing, it's okay. We're gonna fix all this. I also did those little oval antennas. This is just simply brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna add some more water to my little pan over here. You don't want this gold to be too watery. You want it to be thick when you're applying it on your paper. Okay, again, it looks kind of bronzy at the, at the angle you're looking at now. But watch, look at that. <coughs> Isn't that just gorgeous? Okay, now I'm going down into the peacock area. And I'm going to apply it in those areas that I saved out for it. Such a gorgeous metallic. And this is probably another time when you're grateful that you've got a fine small chip on your water brush so you can get in these areas. And there's some areas that are very small. I don't want, at this point, I don't want you to look at your work and think, oh, but it's sloppy. We're gonna fix all that, neaten everything up with our black pen. And you can add as much of the metallic or as little as you like. If you only want just some little 
small accents, then you would go back to another color to fill in those areas that we left blank. It's all up to you. I like to add enough to really make it sparkle, but yet I don't want it to be the main event. Look at that gold, isn't that just brilliant? And this also dries very quickly, which is gonna be great to give us a chance to, again, quickly move forward with our next step. The gold metallic areas that we're putting down, those will be some areas that will not be shaded with dry pencils. So just to give you a heads up, because it kind of speaks for itself. Okay, still doing the same thing. Moving my paper so I can really get in these little crevices. This will be a great gold metallic for our holiday card design that you may want to think about later. And it's very hard to get these in the minute, tiny little areas. Try your best and know that we're going to neaten it all up. It's all going to get better. On the screen right now, it looks pretty sloppy. I'm glad that I'm not depending on that, and I know that it's going to get better. So have a little faith. Okay, still got more to do. I know you're probably looking at the screen saying, wow, she's missing a lot of spots. I'm not worried.
Almost there. Patience, patience, patience. Oh my goodness, I may be almost, nope, I'll see, one more spot here, two more spots. That's a lot of detail. Ooh, that one got a little bit too, too wet. Okay, I can easily see I've got an area here that I'm gonna to have to add another color, just one little area. There's everything else. I think is pretty much ready to go. I may find, oops, there's a little, I love the little gold polka dots. There, yeah, it's so pretty. Okay, gonna really wash my brush out this time because that metallic can really stay in there. So I'm really gonna squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and rub it on the paper towel until all that gold is gone. Oh, it didn't take long. Let's climb now. I need to put something in that. I'll put my pink. My my rose. Give me a rose. My deep rose goes back in here. I missed one little spot. So this is the part where I want you to look at your drawing. See if you missed any areas that need some color. And we want to make sure it's dry, well, especially the areas that we're getting ready to go to. Oh my goodness, I know this was in chance, guys. I know. If you're still hanging with me, thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm trying to get this at an angle where you can really see that gold because it's just so. Look at there. Look over there on the left side. It just, well, you can see it on your own page. All righty, I'm gonna put all my pencils up. My watercolor pencils, that is. That's why I'm putting away. Because now I'm gonna use, let me give you a choice here. You can use your micron pen or you can use a paper mac pen. Paper mac pens, <clears throat> excuse me, are good for going back and adding on top of colors because they hardly ever clog. And they actually make a paper, make pen and a fine tip. So is that kind of up to you? I'm gonna start off with my Micron PN and I'm gonna start at the top because I know all that area is nice and dry. So I'm putting them back on the tape again. <clears throat> and I know this again feels a little tedious, but this is when we start doing the touch up. I know, I know, it feels like you're drawing the thing again, but it needs it, okay? We're just kind of reaffirming these black lines that made our design. I told you it's gonna be a tedious project. I'm gonna play with his eye just a little bit, or her eye, whoever it is. I'm gonna add some eyelashes in here. That's just up to you. And maybe, look, that looks much better. Now, even though I've got gold metallic on this frickle, I can still go back and reinforce those black lines. <clears throat> See how pretty that is. This is the part where you're going to fall back in love with your design and say, oh, it's getting much better. And again, I know it feels like you're drawing the whole thing, which in a way you are. 
But all you have to do is follow the lines that are already there. And again, take a break. You may want to do this at another time. You might want to go and just do something else and come back to it. I'll still be here. Actually, this part usually does not take that long because you're just reaffirming the lines that are already there. It's not like you have to re think about where you want to put things. And then when you do that, see how much neater everything is looking? And look at that gold. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> okay, keep on down the neck. As far as these inside lines are concerned, I would rather we wait until we do our shading with most of them. These scallops need a little help, but let's wait till we shade and then we'll see how much we need, okay? Okay, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, that the edge, outer edge of these flukes need to be reaffirmed. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and do those. What we're doing by reaffirming these lines, not only does it neaten up, but it reestablish these auras that were originally there. I'm careful where I put my hand because I don't want to put my hand in anything that's not quite dry. I've only got one area down in here that's still just a little bit wet. So you want to be careful with that. but I think you can probably see on the screen how much better everything is shaping up now. And then shading and embellishing will be our last steps. And I'm going to go ahead and redo these print top here in the middle, these spirals. Yeah, I uh, probably will. I personally will do most of the interior lines of this peacock. I will let you do what you want to, but I think that you'll probably end up doing it because it looks so much better. And it still will not interfere with our shading. Don't worry, this goes more quickly than you may think. <clears throat> Turn it back upside down. And I'm using a PN. I'm actually going to switch over to just a regular O1, just because although it's not a big difference, it's just enough of a difference to go down where it's not quite as thick. You probably won't see a bit of difference. I don't know if you knew that, but the black PN is just the tiniest bit thicker than a regular O1.
things are looking much neater. I'm able to reinforce those areas where I kind of colored over the lines. It might give you the feeling that you actually did draw this peacock. And even these auras and the neck. Okay, look at the top part. It's looking nice. And we haven't even shaded yet. Already things are getting great. Okay, I'm going to quickly go over this scalloped edge, which is our tangled top goes pretty quickly. Remember, you've got the luxury of stopping this at any time you want to take a break. We could easily leave this step out, but your work would not look as good. So What's the point of that? We want things to look beautiful. And especially if you make a present out of this or a gift and give it to somebody, you want this to be beautiful, exquisite. Anyone can do easy. Oh, this is nice. I personally enjoy doing this. It's just an extra step, but I, I just, I love the whole process. Okay, now moving down into everything finally dried. Okay, good. Don't have to worry where I put my hand now. Everything's good and dry. Moving into the fun areas where I have a lot of curly cues. I don't think I need to do every single line in there. You decide, it's your art. You get to decide what you want to reinforce and what you think needs, just, just doesn't need it. You don't need me telling you what to do. Oh, it's just looking so much better. And we were able to do this in stages. So everything got nice and dry. We didn't have to pull out the hair dryers. And that gold metallic, I'm sure you've noticed, is very easy to work with. It plays along nicely, even with the black micron pen. I was worried that it would clog, but it's not. It's every now and then it will slow down my pen just slightly. But I can go back over it.
And now if you at one time felt like your work was getting a little sloppy, I hope that this is helping you now and reaffirming that no things are getting neater, it's looking much better. So if I get quiet at this point, I haven't left you. You can see my hand. You can tell that I'm still here. I'm just doing the same thing, just reaffirming all these lines. And we are really moving, moving right along here. Some of these really thin inner lines inside in here, not everything needs to be redrawn. Again, it's going to be up to you. You get to exercise your artistic liberties. I promise you that the majority of my classes and projects will not be this intense. I've had this peacock design in my head for about three years. And I finally went with it and drew it out. So I hope you like it. Again, I like to move the paper every now and then so you can really see that that gold metallic. Gosh, it's just just divine. Don't we like divine things? We're going to be adding some touches of white as well. And I'll get into that in a few minutes and show you what I'm doing to make some of those little white dots that are going to be so nice and crisp.
Moving right along, things are going well. I hope you haven't given up on me. Some of these little gold polka dots look like little gold buttons. So cute. I'm feeling encouraged. I feel like I'm on the home stretch. And that means I'm getting ready to do my favorite part, which is the shading. I actually love doing this part because it just neatens up everything. I think my peacock is happy too. I can tell. Wow, that gold is just shimmering. That's the way gold should be, shimmering. I've got some old gold buttons down here. When you reinforce that circle around those little gold polka dots, it's almost making it look beveled. If you do another one of these, I would clearly suggest doing it in stages. I hope you do another one of these. You may not want to do it all in one sitting, but just do it in stages. Start off with your watercolors. Then maybe come back another day and do your next step. Take your time with it. I'm getting almost finished. So I am getting a little giddy almost. and I can easily see how much better it looks. My peacock is getting happy too. He wants to look his very best. 
do like these little gold buttons. He's dressed up in his finest. Okay, I'm on my last section over here. My hand hasn't cramped yet. If yours is hurting, you can take a break. All right, I'm there. I think I'm there. I'm sure I'll find a spot somewhere that I missed. I'm not worry, my pen's not going anywhere. It'll, it'll be close by. Okay, I'm gonna start doing some shading. I'm gonna start with this neck area. First, I've got to find my pencils. Oh my, here they are. For that noise. I've got a lot of Prismacolor pencils and some paper cast towels. And what I like to do whenever I do shading with dry pencils, I look at my area, for example, that little sienna gold and see that it's got some gold tones in it. So actually I'm going with two colors. I've got a golden rod and I also have my terracotta pencil that I talk about all the time because I love it. I use terracotta for a lot of things. So what I'm doing now is because this is a cylindrical effect, I want to go in on both sides and I've got my dry pencil and you can see on the screen how I'm shading the sides of it by just scumbling. Scumbling is, you know, making those circular shapes. And I'm putting this right on top of the black lines, right on top of that watercolor. And look how, I'm, oh, look at that. Just look at that. Already I've got like a little dimension. I've got some shading on the side and I've got a nice highlight coming down the middle, but wait, there's more. I love to keep my white pencil on hand and you can see I use it a lot because look how short it is. I'm gonna go back on top of this, just middle area, just the middle and lighten that up just a tad. Look at that nice, gorgeous highlight. Now, most of the time when I shade, I pick a pencil, a dry pencil, that is in the same color family, but a little bit maybe darker hue. But with some colors like this, I happen to know already that this terracotta is just delicious with this sienna gold. Look at that. Are you feeling better now? Look at this. Look at that gorgeous shading. Got some shading on both sides, got a beautiful highlight. I'm going into, I've got a smudge here and I, I hope you forgive me. I've got to get that out because that's just making me crazy. So let me find my eraser. Does that happen to you? Sometimes you feel like you see a smudge in your work and like you just can't move forward until you get that out. 
Okay, now I can't find my eraser. I may have to wait. I may have to wait till later so I can get that out. Okay, I will. I'll wait till later to get that out. To keep more sp uh, smudges, I'm gonna take this paper towel. And I'm just gonna cover up a part of it so for me to put my hand down. I don't wanna make any more smudges. But I do wanna keep my terracotta and go up to the beak area. Let me get that on screen. I'm just shading. Now, for those of you who have done a lot of Zentang, I'm moving to the other part. For those of you who are used to doing Zentangle, this is what I wanna ask you. When you do work like this, ask yourself, well, where would I shade that if I was doing Zentangle? And that's your answer. What you're doing is you're shading with color instead of graphite. Wait, it gets even better. I'm going to take my light, my, my thin fine tip paper make pen and look. What does it look like? I'm going to add a little hatching. You can do that with your O1. I told you things were going to just get better and better and better. Now, I hope you're believing me. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit to the beak area. Lovely. Now, I want to show you something. While we're, while we're still here at the top on his head, I'm getting out a lot of different tools, but I just want to show you. I love this calligraphy pen that Tombow makes. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I never can. But it's just a faux calligraphy pen. And I'd like to add enhancements for what I mean by that is even around this frickle, see how I can add more little curly cues. You can do this with your regular O1 pen. It's just I happen to like how it looks with the thin, thick, thin, thick design. See, I'm just adding some more embellishments to my peacock. That might be enough. I'm going to stop right there. I'll probably put some down in the bottom. Now let's look at this green. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now that I, I love to shade green, but it never shows up very well on my screen. And I don't know why. Okay, I've got the apple green in his head. I'm going with a dark green to do some shading. I know. Let's just see. Let's see what happens when on the screen. Let's see if I'm moving really close to that. Maybe you can see a little bit better. Yep, 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 that's better. You see how I'm just kind of scumbling around the circular part up in here, giving it some dementia. Dimension. Oh gosh, my peacock, I hope doesn't have dementia. That would be sad. Okay, but see what I mean? I'm giving that some shading so it looks a little bit more rounded. So he doesn't have just a flat head little bit under the eye. It looks far better. Green is the one color that fights my camera. So just trust me, it looks a lot better in person. And I'm using the dark green. If I want to continue hatching, and for those of you who know me, you know I will, I'm going to get my, my O1, just add a little, Detail. You don't have to add a lot. You don't have to add any if you don't like it. But it really just kind of bumps things up. Okay, let's move into this blue area. I need to go with a darker blue. And I don't know if I've got it right on my table. I don't. Bear with me while I find my, ooh, I do, I do, I do, I do. Here's an indigo blue that may give me, oh, that's gonna work beautifully. I'm doing the same effect that I did up in here. Because this is another cylindrical effect, I want to go on both sides. Stumble in some darkness. Work in layers. Work in layers always. That means you put down a little bit and then put down a little bit more. Then maybe a little bit more, you don't just, to attack it with a heavy layer of shading. 
if you do that, you, you peacock won't be happy. See, I'm coming down. Now I'm going to add a little bit more pressure on my hand from my hand because I want that edge to be a little bit darker. Get in there. I'd rather do a little bit than do a little bit more. So remember, just try to find a color that is in the same color family, but a, usually I go with a darker hue. And this is when our peacock is starting to just, oh, he's going to strut and he's going to show off his feathers. He's just feeling so good about himself. This almost looked like fish gills. I just noticed that. Okay. Probably should have said that. Okay. I'm still coming up. And even now, without using the white pencil, I can easily see how I have established a highlight in the middle area, which is making this area look a little rounded. Peacock is not flat, okay? He's got muscle tone and curves and all kind of things going on in his body. I can go a little bit darker. And if you're not using it to go a bit blue, I think Prismacolor also makes a, some dark, there's several darker blues, just several, just find a, or if you're using your favorite cast down, let's see what they got. Ooh, ooh, lots of things. Mmm, lots of things. What is this? I gotta put this in here. Here's the hello blue reddish and it that can let me, let me sample it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, I can mix them. If I feel like I'm not getting the tone that I want, I'll get another pencil. Why have all these colors if you're not gonna use them? Look at that. Look how gorgeous this shading is happening. Now you feel like the peacock was worth it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go a little darker. I'm not afraid of the dark. Off on this side. Anything, anytime you have a cylinder shape, you definitely want to apply this technique because it's going to keep it from looking so flat. It's going to make it look rounded and give it some life. And now I'm going to go with my white pencil. I think I've already lost. Where did things go? I've got it. Oh, here it is. It says short and little. I couldn't find it. I'm just going to bump up some of these with my white pencil only in the middle area. Because that's going to look how that highlight just, hmm, that pretty. Isn't that pretty? Our peacock is really becoming alive now. I'm going in with these. Um, okay, I should probably stick with the same color, but oh, whatever. Okay, so now I'm going in with the teal colors, and I've got so many things I could use. Prismacolor has an aquamarine that I really love, but the, I love the cobalt turquoise of the Faber-Castells. I just need to sharpen it. So hold that thought, everybody. Okay, we're sharp, ready to go. Cause I know that's gonna give me the, the punch that those little areas need. See, I'm just doing some shading coming around the inside kind of concave area of, of that. Uh -huh. Now we're talking, now we're talking. This shading, guys, is worth, is worth the wait. 
telling you not to despair. It would get so much better. Now this technique that you're doing with the watercolor pencils and then coming back with your dry pencils to shade certainly doesn't apply just to peacocks. You can use this technique with all your, your artwork. Makes such a difference. I'm gonna stick with this color because I know, remember that jade green that I was having so much fun with? I know I've got a lot of it in this peacock. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these colors shaded. Now this um, paper castell that I'm using has a little bit more blue than it does green. And I'm happy with that. I love sometimes adding a very slight contrast. And the blue and green families allow that because there's so many, so many ranges of that. I've got a little imperfection there I need to fix. There. That's better. Okay, back to my pencil. Whoops. Don't cover everything up with your shading. You're just adding those areas of shade. <clears throat> my, my camera shows it there. And if you wanna add highlight at the same time, then get your other right hand and get put your white pencil in it and see how you can bump up some of the highlighted areas at the same time, just by running that across. I don't spend a lot of time with this. You can just do a little hit and miss. Even that little rose color, which I haven't shaded yet. This is trying to be efficient. Why I've got that pencil in my hand is use it. Now I've got this same gorgeous shade down here. And see that needs some shading too. And that area is already just looking, gosh, so much better. It was pretty before, but now it's getting to be stunning. Okay, I'm looking at other areas with the same jade and there's lots of them because I remember I liked it so much. And I think I'm gonna stay with this same color. However, I'm just, just for fun, grinning giggles, I'm gonna play with this um, aquamarine because it's very much in the same family as our jade. You see how pretty that shows up? Oh, I hope that shows up. There, maybe that's a better angle. You don't want harsh, harsh, hard lines. You want to blend that in the best you can. That's a little bit better. You don't want just a line of shading down there. You want to be able to blend that in. A little bit darker on the edge. <clears throat> the idea is to feather it in with a gradation, darker on the edge, and then you lift up with some pressure as you're moving toward the center. And that's going to give you the gradation of going from dark to lighter. Dark to light. That didn't come out right. Like that. And that is giving some shape to this paisley. I'm concentrating right now just on the shaded areas. Because I'm going to come through with my white pencil, what's left of it. Straight down the middle. I 
and just brighten that up. I can brighten up these little gold bands in the middle. That's not metallic. Remember, we were going to leave the metallic alone. Now I need to do some little touch up here. I know it would. Remember the metallic, we are not going to shade that or add a highlight. It is, it's not going to, it just it won't play well with that. If you want to add some hatching, that's another great area right there. There, see that paisley? It, we can apply the same technique to other areas. For example, over here, I've got that same jade green. So this, this aquamarine pencil that I'm using will work beautifully in here. Doing the shading, doing some feathering with my colored pencil so that I don't get just a harsh line. Zoom out a little bit, see how we're getting this nice tonal value with our colors. We're not using any graphite shading. We are simply shading with color. And our peacock is happy about that. I can hear, mine's talking, I hope yours is too. And here, here's another of that same color. My little frickle. Okay, I know I've got more. Here's another little frickle. So if you get confused with where to put the color shading, I kind of run out there. This is what I do. I just kind of take my black pen and add some little echo lines in there. Anytime I color outside the lines, that was like I meant to do that. What was I saying? And if you're confused with any areas about where to shade, just go back to your basics of, of Centangle and think, okay, where would I shade this if this was black and white? So remember, like for your overlay areas. And still shading. I'm looking for any areas of that same color. Because that allows me to work a little bit more efficiently. And I need to neaten up that with my black pen. I miss that area. And you let me do it. You didn't say a word. There, that's better. Okay, same color up in here. And don't be afraid to be a little bold with this shading. It's almost like introducing a new color into the peacock, as if it didn't have enough already. Okay, where am I? Over here. I'm following the color.
If there's any areas where you need to bump up a highlight, just grab your white pencil. Like maybe right in there. Remember whatever you put white colored pencil on, whatever is underneath it, it's going to lighten it. So, oh, I haven't got to that area yet, but hang on. Okay, what color am I? Oh, I got, I missed the dark green down here. Let's go back to my dark green pencil. Here's a little overlay. Is that dark green? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, here's a little overlay area. So I want to make sure I'm getting in there. You will learn as you practice that you're going to get a lot of variation with your color just by the amount of pressure you put with your hand. You have it all along. It's like the ruby red slippers. You have the control all along. Oh, where's my light? I don't want to get that too much brighter, but it can handle a little highlight in here. Oh, lovely. Oh, I forgot that area. Okay, that shadings make a huge difference. Let's look at these fuchsia. And yeah, the, the, the rose, the color, well, excuse me, the area where I use that rose, I know of a pencil that I love. It's called Mulberry. Prismacolor makes it. I already know that Mulberry is going to be my friend here. Oh, it's, it's the same color family. It's just a darker hue. So we know that they're going to get along very well. I colored outside the lines. What could I do? What could I do? Make a little echo line. Do that stuff all the time. Okay, go back to my mulberry. Still doing some shading. Grabbing my white. I got to sharpen. Well, I'm scared to sharpen this thing. I think it's going to go away, but we'll see. Okay, I sharpened my white and he survived the pencil sharpener. <laughs> this is what's left of it. Okay, so I've got to add some, bump up some highlight. See how that on the screen that's just showing it's so bright? Your white color pencil serves two purposes. First of all, it's going to lighten whatever's underneath it. And it also serves as a blender. You can blend colors with that. So now that, I'm happy with that. I'm moving down to this area in here, doing some shading. And I can already tell you that I will come back on this, I mean, this paisley with my white, not the colored pencil. I'll show you in a minute what we're going to do. And I have some white dots there in the middle. So I'm just kind of doing like a little circular shading with this darker mulberry shade. Hmm, and that's just pretty, just pretty, 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 pretty. See how these, these all these uh, colors, the water pencils and the dry pencils together, they, they get along so well, they play so well together. And if you haven't noticed it already, I want you to sit back and look at your peacock and see how much better everything's getting. I'm going to try, as long as this point stays sharp, to create kind of a, almost like a cylindrical effect on these edges here, the edges of my paisley by coming through with a white pencil down the middle. 
and the darker mulberry on the side. See the difference between that side and that side? Nice, nice. All of these little things matter. It may seem tedious, I know, and it, it maybe it is, but it matters. It just makes your artwork look so much better. I'm still using my mulberry because I've got a lot of this rose, especially up in here. But here's another area. Okay, here's my white. Play with this highlight. Look at that. That just, oh, it's just singing. A singing peacock. All righty. Things are just looking so much better. Okay, let's add some bump to this rose up here in these little scallops. Isn't that pretty? That just mulberry color is just divine. I'm keeping my shading consistent, coming in from the same side on each one and letting my highlight be equally consistent. Goodness, this peacock is just, oh, he's just stunning. I love the variation of colors that you can get by mixing the, the watercolors with the dry pencils. Like I said, they just work so well together. Okay, is that on my rose? No, I've got some right here. A grand area to do some shading. How could I have missed that? Oh, look at that. And then some in the middle. Leave that little middle area on each side as your highlight. See what I mean? And it's just beautiful. Uh, sharpen my pencil time. Okay. I always like to mute myself so you guys don't have to put on earphones. <clears throat> Look how nice and rounded that is looking now. That paisley. I'm going to just kind of bump up some of these. Roses, whoops, I lost my point. I hate that when that happens. Okay, you gotta be careful when you get the sharp points sometimes, you can lose them. Okay, is that on my road? No, here's some. Oh, pencil, come back, come back, come back. Mm. Okay. Okay, 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 we're orange. We've got some orange areas and you know what I'm gonna do. Where's that terracotta? Right here. Gosh, I love this pencil. You can also get by with a little Tuscan red because orange has a tiny bit of red in it. So kind of up to you, you might wanna use both. I've got my terracotta. I'm going around my orange areas. I love this pencil so much. 
I use it a lot. Look how pretty that does with the tangerine. I called it orange, but it's really tangerine. It just makes a difference, just makes all the difference. I'm gonna bump up that highlight just a little with my white. And look how that just makes that shine. Sweet. Look at Frickle here. Frickle looks very uninteresting compared to this kind. Okay, so let's dress. So I lost my look at there. My point just totally broke. Okay. All right, we got, we're gonna dress up Frickle here. Let's come around the outside edge first. I'm just scumbling in some of that terracotta. Because you don't wanna just use, use a harsh line. Just scumble that in. Because you still wanna see the tangerine underneath it, I mean, beside it. Get a little darker under this other layer, yeah. Oh, lovely. Now let's go up around this side because again, back to that cylindrical effect. Look at that. It's like somebody just pumps some air into him. White, white in the middle. Now Frickle is not sad anymore. Because he looks good. Can you bump up that edge just a little bit more? Lovely. Here's some more orange. Oh, oops, excuse me. Tangerine, tangerine. I don't care what you say. That tangerine is, is just pretty. Okay, there's more. I put that little tangerine in a lot of places. So I'm using, still using my terracotta. Just doing a little, a little dab of do you effect by shading. Keep finding little areas that I need to touch up with my pen. That, that's what that was about. Oh, another area. I'm glad for these tangerine areas because I really do like that terracotta. I hope at this point you're seeing that your peacock has just taken on such a different look by having all the shading done. I think it's maybe time for me to purchase a new white pencil. I can hardly hang on to this guy. But boy, he has served me well. Thank you, white pencil. You've been a good friend. I think I got all the orange. I'm not happy up here because I want to add a little bit more terracotta. I kind of knew I would. Now I'm getting happy. Feathering some of that terracotta back into the middle area. That makes me happy. I'm, oh, that's much better. I had a feeling I would do that. Okay, where are we? Where are we? Where are we purple? Ooh, what have I got for purple? Right here, here it is. And guess what it's called? It's called mauve, but it's a great purple. 
purple. I've got a little bit of purple going on in here from my watercolors. Ooh, 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 that's gonna be, it's just gonna be just right. Oh, I love all these colors. If you have a place in your home where you need to bump it up with some color, I believe Mr. Peacock here can solve that for you. Do I have any other purple? How come I didn't do that? Here's a little bit. Did I put some yellow and penny up there? I'm gonna add a little bit of purple in with my mulberry. Because I know them, I'm, I know them well. We go back a long ways, and I know that they like each other. Just a little bit to add a little pizzazz. Never be afraid of color. Oh, I like mixing that. Maybe I'm going to put some up here too. Purple. Mauve, well, this is actually called mauve, but I will call it purple. And mulberry, they get along just like peas and carrots. All righty, all righty, believe it or not, we are down to the finish line and our peacock. Now, now you wonder what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't put this purple pencil down. But it's just so, so lovely. I love putting purple and mulberry together. That's fun. Okay, seriously. Okay, let's look at what we got. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next because it's just fun. I'm going to move all this, all these pencils out of my way because they're going to roll all over my work if I don't. Now. Let's get some white in here. We're going to add some white touches. And I'm going to show you what I do. Let me bend my paper because it's starting to curl up on me. Um, 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 um. If you want to add some hatching, you can do that too. Let's talk about that first, just because there are some areas, you know, lots of areas in this peacock where you can add some hatching. I'm not going to do it all on this video because I know you're probably ready to sign off and do some other things but i just want to show you how you can just bump up some areas in this with some hatching but let's add some white now you can use a white gel pen i i don't and i'll tell you why because i want a really crisp crisp as possible white and this is what i use i love this stuff i get it from amazon or you can get it from my book dealer in and uh, greensboro north carolina and I use my little dot tool. Look at that thing. This is perfect for making little dots. And this, this stuff is thick and it dries quickly. And it's even slightly dimensional. But I'm just gonna, I like making little dots. See what I mean? Now that doesn't show up that much. But I can go through with this and add little dots little white dots and look how that just is just enough to kind of make this look even more festive than it already looks. I'm going to add some over here and I know these guys are going to show up. They also make this St. Um, St. Martin's, they also make it in colors. And I love using this dot art tool because I can make my dots so uniform looking. So I'm down in here, can add some dots. Another area. You can put them anywhere you want, honestly. Any area where you feel like you need to add a little pizzazz, this frickle needs some dots. This frickle needs those dots reinforced. What else we got? Ooh, how about some dots in here? 
These are just fun little things, guys, little embellishments that can make your work look so fun and whimsical and lighthearted. I don't want to go up in the neck with any, but maybe, oh, oh, oh. When this dries, these little dots are actually, you can feel them. When you rub your hand across your, your page, you can actually feel these guys. And I've, I've used this little container for quite a while now. And I haven't run out yet. So it lasts a pretty good while. Okay, I think that's enough, Doc. You can add more. It's your artwork. You can do anything you'd like. And remember how at the very top around that fricka, I took my Tombow calligraphy pen and I added some more little embellishments. I can some more of that. Okay, I've got you yeah, again. You can use your regular micron, but I love the effect that you can get with this pen. And I just love to add more little, you know, little swirls, things like this. Really dress up the peacock. I love the shape that you can get, especially with spirals, by using this pen because you get the, it's easy to get the. Thin, thick, thin, thick, irregular shapes. And see how it, we can just continually play with this peacock. And you know what else? If you just want to add little black dots and little areas. Have fun with this. It's a whimsical piece. It's meant to be fun. Nothing serious about this at all. I'm just coming through and adding some whimsy to my art. Need some over on this side. This is the last part, everybody. I know you're probably saying I can't, I can't take much more. It's a very intense project. I know that. And I appreciate all of you for sticking it out and staying with me. Look how fun this can be when we add all these little elements like that. There's only one thing left to do at this point. And you know what that is. Oops, I don't like those on the same length. I like a regular length. So there we go. All I need to do now is grab my micron pen and sign my name. There. Call that done. Let's look at the peacock now. Again, an intense project, guys. I know it is. And I know that this video is ridiculously long, uh, but it's just, you know, it, it is what it is. It's worth every bit of the, the work that you put into this. This is worth the frame. Look at that, look at that gold metallic, how it just shimmers and shines. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of my world and thank you for sticking with this long video. I know it is long, but enjoy your peacock. Have fun with it. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.